I just want to ask a few of you um, in the back, why do you study at school? Me? Uh, uh, to learn, like to learn and stuff like, yeah. To learn? Oh, how about you? Yeah. Uh, maybe socialize with your friends and learn other stuff that you didn't know before. Fine. Uh, Sarah? To prepare to get into the society. All right, so to prepare for the future in general. So contemporary education, and this is why I want to talk about is our education really contemporary if we're trying to prepare for the future, which is not contemporary. So here's a quote for you. Education is our passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. And we're preparing for our future today by going to school and by learning through education. And here's what it looks like, past to present, we're continuing to learn. And you've probably been in school for the last probably 11, 10 years. And we're studying in the past and in the present for our future because our success and our work and our desire to change the world lies in the future. And our education only extends to wherever we are in the present. And now, this is another quote I want to bring to you. The past has no power over the present moment. How does that feel? Your education that you have learned in the past has no power of the present. And this is what I think education means more likely today in the 21st century. Whatever you learned in the past is not going to help you in the future. Now, that is because 21st century education is behind. We're behind, we're not contemporary, and we're lacking. We're not moving up to adapt to the changing environment. And look at the clock. It's not moving one way anymore. There is no sense of time in our education. So here, I just broke down the high school curriculum, basically. So English, you are required to get four years of English education for literature, for understanding, and for cultures that are embedded in these literature. And math, you are required in most American high schools, pre-algebra, algebra, and pre-calculus, basic calculations for daily life. And most times, you won't even see half the things you see on your test, like functions or trigonometry. Then we have the social sciences. World history, US history are usually the most required courses. And then you have electives such as economics or geography that you want to take. But how much of these do we actually apply to our daily lives? Are you going to use, oh, George Washington was born sometime <laughs> in daily life? I don't think so. And sciences. Most schools require three sciences, biology, chemistry, and philosophy, no, not philosophy, physics. And these help us learn about the inquiry, how to make logical reasoning between cause and effect. And these are all skills that we have been learning since the 20th century. These are skills that we have been learning ever since education began, because these are just fundamentals that we have to know, and these aren't anything new that we have adapted to the 21st century. And here are some electives. Art, music, computer technology, but computer technology, isn't that something more of an issue today? Why is it only an elective? Most schools in the United States, according to the National Institute on Education, don't even require computer technology or require just a semester of it. So here we are, the some factors that we have already addressed in previous presentations as changes or factors that are changing our world today. And they include internet, technology, resources and environment, globalization, demographics, and space. And I want to address the two on the bottom, demographics and space. While we focus on 21st century technology and how that's changing our society, we fail to realize that humans themselves are changing. Now we have more populations than we can support, and this is leading to competition in the work arena. And this is an issue that schools are failing to address. So career. Career is one of the final destinations for education in high school or education in college. We study so we can have a career in the tomorrow. And now I've stated that there is no meaning of time in education today because future is now and now is the future. So this is from a national education institute. This is data for what labor is going to look like in the United States in the future. And I just picked out the two main industries that are going to continue to develop, which is healthcare and complex communication. Now you might have thought it might be computer technology, but the reason why computer technology is not being as important towards our recent future is because we already have big data. We already have computers to mine the information that is on the web. What we need is person-to-person -person communication and ideas that computers cannot come up with. Creativity is what we need. And healthcare. 
With the amount of people continuing to live further and live longer than before, and with more adults than younger people, this is why healthcare is going to become a new industry and a growing industry in the future. And are we addressing this at school? No, because health and communication, public speaking is not a required course. So this is what I mean by what schools need to address, and this is what 21st century education is behind on. Idea and new fields. Computers and artificial intelligence, we can all mine data. They can all do the labor. But this labor is something that humans no longer have to do. When humans have to physically act out and do the research, we need we needed human labor. And we needed people who can search on the internet. But now that we have artificial intelligence, which is becoming big now, and we also have data mining computers, and also robots who will be taking over our physical industries. What we need are ideas, because ideas are something you can get through labor. And that's why we also need to look into new fields. So, moving on. I just want to introduce some careers that didn't exist 10 years ago. 10 years ago, there were no app developers. Today, there are app developers. And have you ever heard of the job, Generation Mitigator? No, because generation mitigators are new jobs that are rising today in companies because the millennium workers, the millennium generations, can't interact with the technology behind generations of before. The 50s of today are working with the 20s of today, and who needs to be in the middle? The generation mitigators. And this is only happening because our future is coming closer to us than our present is. Because now that our present is the future, our education needs to adapt, and our education needs to realize that careers are no longer going to be stagnant. We aren't just going to need lawyers and medical professionals. We're going to need people who are going to go to space, who are going to give ideas that can't be reached through physical labor. And that is why 21st century education is behind, and these are critical issues that our education system needs to accomplish. Thank you.